Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to yet another episode. On the show today is a little game by the name of Ninja Gaiden 3, which, as you can probably guess by the title, is the third and final game in the classic series. The game was developed and released in 1991 by Tecmo, and the events of Ninja Gaiden 3 take place in between the plot lines of the first two games. The story begins with our ninja hero Ryu being framed for the murder of Irene Liu. Now, the plot to Ninja Gaiden 3 is not what I would consider one of its strong points. It's no great work of fiction by any means, and it does get absolutely absurd at points. Later on in the game, even rifts and alternate dimensions come into play. But hey, you don't play Ninja Gaiden games for the storyline, right? Well, I would hope not. Ninja Gaiden 3 operates very similarly to the other two games in the series, and that is a good thing. It's still all about kick-ass ninja action, platforming, wall jumping, and glorious boss fights. That's not to say that Part 3 doesn't bring a few new features to the table, though. First and foremost would be the ability to hang onto and climb ledges, which makes the platforming even more fun and fluid than in the other two games, which is saying a lot since the series up until this point was very well known for its excellent control and platforming mechanics. The only bummer about this feature is that Ryu can only attack with his secondary weapons while hanging from a ledge. In addition to the new climbing mechanic, Ryu can also now power up his default attack with sword upgrade items. Once picked up, Ryu's attack range increases dramatically. What makes this so cool is that it also widens the radius of Ryu's sword strikes so that enemies low to the ground can now be defeated without having to duck an attack. This goes a long way to help you keep up the pace when you're quickly trying to make your way from one end of the stage to the other. Speaking of the stages, there are seven total levels in Ninja Gaiden 3, and each one is divided into multiple sections. You'll be taken to all kinds of different backdrops, like icy caverns, swamps, and even the wings of an airship in mid-flight. Each level is pretty long and varied, and the game does a great job of never making you feel like you're repeating the same areas over and over again. The Ninja Magic still works the same way it always has, with each requiring a certain amount of stored power to use. I can honestly say that I feel like Part 3 is a bit more liberal as far as handing out magic powers and items than the other two games, and you will definitely need them. Many of the bosses in the game can be a heck of a lot easier if you go into the fight fully powered up. Ninja Gaiden 3 also introduces a new ninja magic art in the series called the Vacuum Wave, where two blades are shot out from above and below Ryu at the same time. Oh, and it definitely wouldn't be a Ninja Gaiden game without the trademark cutscenes that Tecmo made so famous, and the third iteration is no exception. You'll be checking out your story progression in between each stage via some really great looking anime style storytelling. The footage that you guys are looking at here is from the Famicom version of the game, and like Mad City, there are some pretty major region differences. First off, the Japanese version utilizes unlimited continues just like the first two games and a password system. Both of these features were removed from the US version of the game in order to intentionally make it harder. On top of that, Ryu also takes twice the amount of damage from enemies in the US version, making it a much more frustrating game to play through, though still enjoyable with some practice. Graphically, Ninja Gaiden 3 is without a doubt the best looking of the original three. The art and stage design in this game is superb, with all kinds of amazing detail and background effects throughout. Take for example the rain effect on stage 5, or the creepy bio-themed area in stage 6. Still, I have to say, the coolest looking stage in my opinion is the beginning of stage 7 when you're on that massive airship. Seeing those separate layers of scrolling clouds go by at the bottom is just really a neat touch. The sound and music in Ninja Gaiden 3 is even better than that of the original two games. The soundtrack is super memorable, and the sound effects are crisp and clear. You'll even notice that there's a little voice added in for good measure too, with Ryu yelling Hya when attacking. 
Definitely a cool touch, and it helps to give the game a bit more personality. To sum up, Ninja Gaiden 3 is an awesome game in just about every way. While I do prefer the Famicom version due to its leniency, you can't go wrong with either one. It's got killer gameplay, amazing graphics and sound, and it manages to be challenging yet rewarding at the same time. The third game in the series is the one that a lot of folks didn't get around to due to its late release, but if you're a fan of the original two or just a big fan of action games in general, do yourself a favor and pick this one up. As always guys, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching and subscribing, and until next time, stay classic.